So this story is about long. So the idea here is for me to take all of the, to you, every single model here is, is one of the long models that is operating in the industry today. Again, it's quite hard to get models like that. They're off working with all the great photographers around the world doing major campaigns, doing lots of work. So to actually get a girl like that is in itself quite difficult. And then to get a lot of them is quite difficult. So right in there is, you know, my first thing is to find a casting director who will work hard with me for no money, because it's not advertising. So it's editorial. So you've got to persuade him. So that's the first relationship. And then to get all the models to agree, there's all these model agencies clamouring to make money for their girls, they're all flying all over the place, so the coordinatorship like that's really difficult. So I've got here maybe 30 of the top girls, which was a very strong story for me, just starting on that level. And then, you know, what, is, what was it about blondes that was interesting? So to me, it's a cliché, you know, on one level. So what is it about the cliché that's interesting within the context of some from a form of culture or in the context of something that motivates me as a portrait photographer, which is essentially what I am. Uh, and a portrait photographer working within the fashion industry. So I, I do my stuff as, I try and put, put more character and portraiture into it. So what I did was here was just decide to use the iconic blondes, but to put, but to put a different look. So this girl is, you know, got quite a strong portraiture look about her, but she's sitting next to Marion and Nicole Smith. So I kind of printed these things and made a jewellery out of them with the stylus. So that was the idea to kind of try and change a little bit of a look on these girls. And uh, so again, you know, putting Brittany in and putting words, words <coughs> in. And so for instance, this girl here, the, the, you know, all these clothes are made, are, uh, high-end fashion clothes, but I'm trying to slightly do it in a different way. So we've got these kind of hula hoop packets and shrunk them down, which was something that the stylist used to do when she was, you know, 13 herself. So we were bringing that kind of stuff. And this girl, Brooklyn Decker, is a, a top lingerie model, and she normally does very glamorous, kind of over-explicit, sexy stuff. So my idea was to kind of give her a bit more of a masculine look, because that's what I liked about her face. So in a way, I'm trying to kind of, on some level, do the kind of work that I like to do within a very commercial context. And that's kind of what you, you need to do if you're going to make a living, you know, because you've got to please certain people. Or you go completely the opposite route and you go, I'm an art photographer, I do exactly what I want. And then you can come into the industry from that, that, that way. So there's quite a few, you know, there's different, you have to really look at what, who it is you are and what it is you, you want to do. Uh, and I, I like working to uh, problem solving, I call it. I like working within these, these, these restrictions, uh, where some photographers really don't, they don't like having any of that. So you work as, you know, an art photographer. But I saw, in, I saw it, uh, that David had a guy called Ryan McGinney, who I'm sure you guys know is a fantastic art photographer. And he's working in the commercial world. But he started to find it really difficult working to brief. Because the clients, you know, that have, you can't just do what you want. So he found himself working to brief and being restricted and not enjoying it. And also, in a way, losing his value as an art photographer he was doing a lot of commercial work. But he got his commercial work because he was an art photographer. So it is a constant play on, on what you want to do and what, what is available to you in order to make a living as a photographer. So, you know, if I, afterwards in the conversation, if I get an idea of what it is you like, you know, you, we, can look, we can look at... <coughs> how you would approach, you know, like some people are, I'm really into music, I just want to do music, I just want to do R&B groups, you know. Uh, so within that, within that, for instance, there's, uh, within the music industry, you know, there is a career as a music photographer. The only trouble with that now is <coughs> the music industry has, has changed so much, and there's not so much money in that. 
So the jobs that used to be getting album covers and stuff like that, it's not so much, you can't make such a living out of that. Whereas in fashion advertising, there still is quite, quite a market. Uh, I'm just going to whip through these really quickly. So again, you know, something like this is, she's a very established blonde model, and this is <coughs> Chanel jewellery. Now normally you get a shot like that, it would be very fashion and kind of done, and I kind of try to do it the opposite way. And again, you know, kind of back to my photographic roots, which is, you know, pure black and white photography. I was inspired by, by a guy called Ralph Gibson uh, quite a lot, and a lot of the reportage photographers like Cartier Bresson, and if you, if you look at a, uh, an agency called Magnum, uh, they have a lot of great reportage, war photographers, you know, kind of uh, working for Life magazine stuff. That was a lot of my influence. So I kind of brought, tried to bring the influence of what I like as a photographer into the commercial world. So, like I said, again, this is really playing with advertising for a Chanel product, but I stripped it away a little bit and just trying to create a bit more of a portrait. So, you know, again, this is, you know, this ways of me doing my, what I hope is quite strong portrait photography, but in a high fashion context. So this is all high fashion clothes, but you know, I'm kind of playing with it. So that's what this story is, it just kind of goes on. And each one of these girls is, like I say, a top model at the moment. And you know, each, all of, the, all of these items are, you know, fashion items that you have to use within the context. So I'm not going to go through all, all, all these, these pictures. Uh, then this, this here is something from a, a magazine called <coughs> Arena en Plus, which is uh, a men's magazine, essentially. Now, this story, my heritage is really comes from this. In, in the 1980s, uh, I formed a company called Buffalo with the stylist Ray Petri, who unfortunately died. Uh, and he, he was one of the first men's fashion photographers. I know this, uh, I don't know if you guys know Mark Yvonne, I know he's, he's been here. Mark was part of this crew. And what this really was, was a way for us to kind of work within a kind of group, if you like, where we had a similar aesthetic and a similar opinion about photography. So there's always, you know, teaming up is always a really good thing. You know, it's quite lonely and tough out there. So, you know, and now there are a lot of photography teams, you know, doubles and styling teams and kind of people associated in groups, you know, supporting each other within, within the context of a, a particular vision. I mean, a lot of the top photographers now are twos, you know. And it, it, that can help, it can support that can support each other. I find it quite hard myself because I'm a bit of a control freak, you know, in the sense that if I'm not doing it, I don't really know what I'm doing. But actually, it can work really well. And uh, 